In this video, we're going to be talking about inverse functions. And then we're going to do an example where we find an inverse function informally. So let's start off with an easy question. What does an inverse function do? It's kind of, the, it's kind of important to know this. Um, so the long and the short of it is that an inverse function, it undoes a function. It undoes it. So basically what ends up happening is that the domain of f of x becomes the range of the inverse function of x. And the range of f of x becomes the domain of the inverse function of f. So basically, your domains and your ranges, they switch. Now there's an easy way to verify the two functions are actually inverse functions of each other. And that's by using composite functions. So if you take the functions and you find the, let's say your first function is f and your second function is g, then if you take f composed with g of x and get x, and then compose, uh, take the composition of g composed with f of x and get x, that means they're inverses. So put the g into the f, see if you get an x. Then take the f, put it into the g, see if you get an x. If you do, then they're inverses. Let's do an example so that it kind of fits a little bit better and you can understand it a little bit more. So here we're going to have the equation where we're going to find the inverses of these two functions, and then we're going to verify that they're actually inverses, right? Which is what I kind of talked about just a moment ago. So here we have our f of x equals 4x. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and rewrite this just real quick as y equals 4x. And the reason that we rewrite it is it makes it a little bit easier to do it. Okay, so you rewrite it, then you're going to switch the x and the y. So that's your first step. So put the x in the y spot, and then put the y in the x's spot. So you switch those. And you get the y by itself. So we'll divide both sides by 4. And that's going to leave us with y equals x over 4. In other words, our inverse of x equals x over 4. Okay? So there's three steps. Put the y in the f of x's spot, switch the x and the y's, then solve for y. Okay? Now we need to do our, do our verifying. So we're going to go ahead and do our compositions. So we're going to plug in our inverse into the f, right? So here's our f. We're going to plug our inverse inside of there. So we have our x over 4. 4 times x over 4 is just an x. That's good. That's what we wanted. So now let's check the other way. So this time, we'll take our function and put it inside of our inverse. So we go to write our inverse, which is x over 4. And inside of there, that's where we're going to put our 4x, because that was the f. And 4x divided by 4 is x. And so we see that we got an x from both of them. So if they are, in fact, inverses. And so this is, in fact, our answer. Let's do problem B. So remember, our first step is to write it as y equals x plus 7, right? So we're putting the y in. Our second step is to switch the x and the y spots. Our third step is to get the y by itself. Okay. 
then we just need to rewrite it as the inverse of x equals x minus 7. And all that's left to do is to verify. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug our inverse into our function. So our function was x plus 7. And so we're going to plug our x minus 7 into that. And x minus 7 plus 7 is an x. So now we're going to verify that we can do it the other way and take our function and plug it into our inverse. So we're going to take our inverse, which was x minus 7, and we're going to plug in our function, which was x plus 7, and that's going to give us an x. And they both turned into x's like they were supposed to, which means that this is in fact our inverse.